something that you uh, uh, you can say out of your opinion. This, I'm not asking of your opinion. What am I asking you? What is Allah's, uh, you know, what do the uh, Mufassirin say? What does it mean by Alayhim, right? Whom, those people. Who are those? It is, it, is, it is the Jews that Allah is mentioning. So these are the Jews that Allah is mentioning. And Allah is saying that on them, disgrace has been stamped. Aina ma suqifu. Wherever they are found, they will be disgraced, right? Why? And Allah Ta'ala says, Illa except. There will be some who will not be uh, disgraced. And who are those people? Illa bihablim min Allah. Except through a source from Allah. They will be saved from a source from Allah. Or through a source wahablim min an nas. Except and they will be uh, saved from disgrace through a source from people. So now Allah has mentioned two exceptions. That some people will be saved by a source from Allah. And some people will be saved from a source from men. What does that mean? Source from Allah, source from men. Well, who are those? What are those sources of Allah and the sources from? What are these two things? Now, at least to understand this ayah, we have to understand what is that source from Allah. Illa bi hablim min Allah. That these Jews, all of these Jews, they will be, they are disgraced wherever they are found, except that from except through a source from Allah, and except through a source from people. So what is source from Allah? What is that source from Allah that is going to save them? Gee. You answer only if you know what it, the answer is, not a guess, right? You don't guess the Quran. Again, this is, why is this important? This is, if you have a management class or a marketing class, then you can actually give an answer based on your thought that this might be a very good answer. When you talk about tafsir, then tafsir is not something that you give your opinions in. The Prophet ﷺ has said that whoever gives his opinion in tafsir, whoever gives an answer of tafsir, an explanation of the Qur'an through his own opinion is going to go into the hellfire. Why? Because we have to ha understand the Qur'an the way Qur'an has been explained by, by the Prophet ﷺ. That is why we have to go through the tafsir, how the mufassireen have put into it. So the, however way the mufassireen mention, this is what we have to, uh, this is what we have to, you know, just, uh, this is the answer that, that is there. Well, why do we take the uh, opinions of the Mufassirin? That is also a question. That if Allah says that don't take the opinion of anyone, why do we take the opinion of the Mufassirin then? And the answer is that the Mufassirin are also not mentioning their own tafsir of the Quran or their own opinion. They are now referring back to what the Prophet ﷺ has explained or the Sahaba have explained. And this is the only way we can go about learning the explanation of the Quran. So then when you ask a question, you cannot, you don't have an answer to every question unless you have studied it, right? So No, no, no. If you have studied, if you are, if you were not here in the last class, you don't know the answer. Because, you know, because tafsir is tafsir. There's only one answer, and whatever answer is there in the among the uh, uh, Mufassirin, there could be a difference of opinion in the Mufassirin. That some people say that this is the tafsir, and some people say this is the tafsir. And this opinion is not based on their own opinions. It is based on the different types of hadith that they have gone through. So some took one opinion and some took the other opinion, but those two opinions are also the opinion of the Prophet ﷺ. So tafsir, the explanation of the Qur'an, is only that explanation that the Prophet ﷺ has given. There is no other explanation. So you cannot give your opinion that I think this is what it means. And I think this is what it means. And a lot of people have gone astray because of this. Right? Allah Ta'ala says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal lazina amnu la taqrabu salah. That oh you, have, oh you who have believed, don't come near the prayers. Now, 
If somebody just takes this part, he says, Namaz is not worthy, right? Allah Ta'ala says, don't come near Salat. But if you look at the whole statement, Ya ayyuhal lazina amanu la taqrabu salat wa antum sukara. Don't come near the prayers in this situation where you're intoxicated, right? Where, in your, where you are in, st in a state of intoxication. So, again, some people also when they give their opinion, they say, oh, that means alcohol is not bad in Islam. Only when you are in a state of prayers, that's when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that you're not supposed to drink. Otherwise, see, this is what the Quran says. And why do we take, why, why we will say this? Because we are just thinking of, your, of our own opinion. We're just thinking out of our own thoughts, right? And this is what is forbidden. The tafsir of the Quran is not something that we can give our opinion about. It is something that is there, it is fixed. And the tafsir of the Quran is the tafsir that the Prophet ﷺ has given. Or his companions have given. Because they will also give the same tafsir that the Prophet ﷺ has given. That is why the only people who are, uh, who are qualified to give the tafsir are those are uh, is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his companions. Now sometimes we mention these Mufassireen. Sometimes I also mention that Hazrat Mufti Muhammad Taqi Usmani Dawud Barakatum says this. Well I say this because it is mentioned in his book of Tafsir and his book of Tafsir is based on the hadith and the sayings of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? So this is how it is. So if I ask an answer, the answer should be from the tafsir, right? If I ask a question, it cannot be your own opinion. Yes, there could be an explanation based on the tafsir which is present in the hadith. For example, when I sit down here, I give you a tafsir, then I also give you some stories and some other sayings and all these things just to expand on the topic. But the explanation of that part of the Qur'an is still the only explanation that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has, has given. Okay, now, that is why, Zuribat Alayhimu Zilla, now the Jews are not mentioned here. Right? Disgrace has been stamped on them. Where did we come up with Jews? Right? Anybody can say, anybody who's taking his own opinion, disgrace has been stamped on them? Them is the people of, you know, Bulgaria. Or whatever, you know, we can come up with our own opinions. Then, you know, actually these are the Chinese. Zuribat alayhimu zilla, because they have coronavirus going on. <laughs> right? So this is, you know, you can come up with your own opinions. Well, we cannot come up with our own opinions. We can only, only take the opinion of the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa So this word that Zuribat alayhimu zilla, that disgrace has been stamped on them, them are the Jews, nobody else. Right? We cannot come up with our, with our own opinions. So now, when we go ahead, that disgrace had been stamped on the Jews wherever they are found, except for there's two exceptions. Illa bihablim min Allah. Except that they have been given exception by Allah, wahablim min nas, or where they have been given exception by the people. And these two things, what are these two things? Well, exception given by Allah are women, children, elderly, sick, four people. And the fifth one are those worshippers who are in their places of worship and they're just worshipping Allah. So these are the five people. Oh, you can sit there. We'll be aside. So these are the five people who have been given these, ex these exceptions by Allah, right? Then the exception given by people, the Mufassirin again, they said that the exception given by people is the treaty. If they come in a, uh, they make a treaty with the Muslims, then this is the exception given by, by the people. So these are the two exceptions. وَبَاءُوا بِغَزَبٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ Wabau and they have returned min Allah with a wrath of Allah, with anger of Allah. So they have returned with anger of Allah 
And what else? Wazuri bad alayhi mul maskana. And Allah has stamped on them. What has Allah stamped on them? Misery, right? So Allah has stamped on them misery. So now Allah mentions disgrace for them. And there is misery for them. There's anger of Allah. So there's three things for these people, right? Disgrace and anger of Allah. And misery means... Disgrace and misery are the same thing, but there's a difference. When you're talking about maskana, misery, it means financial disgrace. That you are not able to feed yourself, your family, you're in a state of financial uh, problems. And then Allah Ta'ala says, why this happened? ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّهُمْ كَانُوا يَكْفُرُونَ بِآيَاتِ اللَّهِ Because they disbelieved in the ayahs of Allah. وَيَقْتُلُونَ الْأَنْبِيَاءِ They killed the prophets بِغَيْرِ حَقْ With no reason. ذَلِكَ بِمَا عَسَوْا And this disgrace, this misery, this wrath of Allah because they disbelieved, they because of their sins and because they transgressed so this is an ayah focusing completely on the Jews and what they did and how Allah is upset with them but the question is what are, what, what are we supposed to learn from this ayah now here we can have an opinion what are we supposed to learn right now Shah's, Shaf comes into play what do we learn from this Huh? Okay. So now you promised I'm never ever going to give my own opinion, right? So what are we supposed to learn from them? That those people who sin and who transgress the bounds that Allah has set for us, then even if you are not a Jew, this is a sunnah of Allah, that when you transgress, when you disobey, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you these three things, disgrace and financial problems and anger of Allah. So this is what we learned from this ayah for ourselves. So now this was the, this was the last ayah that we did, right? Every ayah that we do, actually I still want to go back to the last ayah because now we're almost done. So I just, I don't think I'm going to go to the next ayah today. But every ayah that we do, all of us sitting here, we should be very clear as to what our maqsad is, what our purpose is. When you want to learn Arabic in this class, you also want to learn Quran in this class. So all of you should be writing down the translation and all of you should be focusing on those words, especially those words that are often repeated words in the Quran. And if you focus on these words, then the translation will be easier for you and there will come a time. And our Thinking is that, you know, within six to eight months, a time comes that whichever ayah is recited from the Qur'an, you're able to understand the translation of that ayah. So it is a very, very, uh, you know, very achievable goal. I'm going to say a few things about this ayah, and then uh, we will end today's class because uh, we're already late, and we were going through uh, some parts of this ayah. Allah Ta'ala mentions that all of this, if you see, the Jews are also a creation of Allah. The Christians are also a creation of Allah. The Hindus are also a creation of Allah. The Muslims. So it is not as if Allah is being unjust. There is something that people do that Allah takes them away from from the iman and from the you know from Allah's happiness, from being on Allah's good side, and that is one thing. Zalika bima asaw. Then what do these people do? Asaw asa means sins because of the sins. So the real problem is, is the sin. So even if you're a Muslim, if you sin. It is not that you will be able to, you know, you will be able to uh, protect yourself from Allah's unhappiness, from Allah's anger. Allah Ta'ala says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhannas, O you, O all the people. 
إِنَّمَا بَغْيُكُمْ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِكُمْ Your disobedience is on you. You will be responsible for your disobedience. So the more you sin, the more you will go away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I want to mention a very famous hadith of the Prophet sallallahu The Prophet sallallahu said that when somebody sins, there is a black spot that is placed on the heart of that person. As soon as you sin, what happens? A black spot is placed on the heart of that person. And if he asks for forgiveness, if he does tawbah that, Oh Allah, I sinned, but please forgive me. If he does this, or he says to Allah that, Oh Allah, I sinned, and this was not right. Whatever sin that you've done, whether you've lied, you've backbited, or whether you have stolen something, or whether you have broken somebody's heart, whether you have been disobedient to your parents, whether you have cheated someone, whatever sin that you've done. As soon as you commit the sin, the Prophet ﷺ has said that a black spot comes over your heart. And as soon as you do tawbah, the black spot is removed. But if you don't do tawbah, if you're not very uh, upset about your sin and you keep on doing sins over and over again, each sin is going to get you a black spot on your heart and there will be a time when that whole heart will become completely black. And then that person enters into the fold of, you know, he's tending towards, you know, He's standing away from Islam, basically. Because no, uh, none of the advice works on him because the heart is black. So you've seen some people who are not ready to listen to any advice that you give. Why? Because they've sinned so much that the heart has completely become, in, has completely become black. So the more sins that you do, the more you tend to go towards Allah. And there comes a time when you sin so much that you even enter into the fold which is outside of Islam. And then sometimes there are non-Muslims who are doing so many good deeds. Their heart becomes so pure that they tend to enter into Islam. So that is why it is the, the most important thing in our lives is to stay away from sins. The more you stay away from sins, the more closer you are to Allah. The more you stay close to sins, the more farther you are from Allah. So now, I will mention one last thing. And then, we will uh, finish off our class today. There's a person I knew, I still know. He said that I was a person, I was not concerned about sinning. I would sin, whatever sin would come my way, I will just commit that sin. And he was a Muslim, born to Muslim parents. But the amount of sins he had done, he had been so away from Islam that he did not even know that whether I am a Muslim or not. Because when you sin, what happens is that your tendency towards worship just goes away. The less you are sinning, it is easier to worship Allah. The more you sin, because the heart becomes dark, it is very hard to actually uh, worship Allah. So, this young man was sinning a lot. His father was also a person that I knew. His father was a very pious man. He was also always very concerned about his son. And the, the, uh, the irony of, of, the, of the thing was that this, this boy and his father, they used to live in Makkah tul Mukarramah, in this blessed city. But even in this blessed city of Makkah, he would, you know, he would sin. So then the father one day told me that I am very upset about my son. 
And I said, what happened? It was Asr time on a Friday. And he said, today I tried to wake my son up for Juma prayers. And he would not wake up for Juma prayers. And we were supposed to pray in Makkah. We were supposed to pray Juma prayers in the Haram. And people die to go to Makkah. And people would love to go there. And people spend so much money and so much time. They travel from all parts of the world. And this boy, he has the opportunity to go pray Juma in the Haram. And I am waking him up and he never woke up. And he missed his prayers. And I asked him that why does he do this? And he said that the whole night he spends on the internet watching things which are not, he's not supposed to watch. And in the day, he's not concerned about prayers. And here he is, he's living in Makkah and he's doing all these things. Why is this happening? Because when you sin, Allah becomes angry on you and Allah throws you away from you. This is exactly the same story of the Jews. But Allah's unhappy. Why? Because they did such big things. They would kill the, uh, the prophets. And they would not believe in the eyes of Allah. They will not turn towards the worship of Allah. So Allah Ta'ala says, because of these sins, Allah has turned away from them. So here you have a person sitting in Makkah. And his father is a very pious man. And his father made him a hafiz of the Quran. But he doesn't get the opportunity to go in the haram and pray Jummah prayers. And then you turn towards the United States. And there was a Jewish woman. And she accepted Islam. And when she accepted Islam, Allah had accepted her so much that Every time she would stand up for prayers, for all five times prayers, each of his prayers would take him one hour. This is how much time she would spend worshipping Allah. And she was a sign and she was a, a source of inspiration for other Muslims as well. So for Allah, it does not mean where you were born and who your parents are. If you are sinning, you are going to go down. And you, if you stop sinning, even if you are a Jewish person living somewhere in the United States, Allah is going to give you guidance. And you will start enjoying worshipping Allah. So this is what happened here. That these Jewish people, these Jews, they would sin. Allah Ta'ala says there's three things for them. Disgrace, anger of Allah, and maskana. Maskana means financial disgrace. And this is because they would kill the prophets, they would not believe in the eyes of Allah and because they would sin and they would transgress the bounds that Allah has given them. So this is a, an explanation of the last ayah and a translation of the last ayah. What I would want from all of you is, you should write down the translation of each and every ayah that we do. I will do the translation one more time. The people who are new in this class, they should also write down the translation. A'uzu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Zulimat alayhi muzilla. And uh, disgrace had been stamped on them. Aina ma thuqifu. Wherever they are found, illa bi hablim min Allah. Except through a source from Allah. Wa hablim min nas or through a source from people, وَبَاءُوا بِغَزَبٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ And they have returned with wrath, with anger from Allah. وَزُرِبَتْ عَلَيْهِمُ الْمَسْكَنَا And misery has been stamped on them. ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّهُمْ كَانُوا يَكْفُرُونَ And this is because they have disbelieved بِآيَاتِ اللَّهِ In the ayahs of Allah. وَيَقْتُلُونَ الْأَنْبِيَاءِ And they have killed the prophets بِغَيْرِ حَقِّ Without any reason, without any truth. Right? ذَلِكَ بِمَا عَسَوْا And this is all because they have sinned. وَكَانُوا يَعْتَدُونَ And they have transgressed the bounds that Allah has set for them. So we will stop here. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq to stay away from sins. And the person who stays away from sins, Allah ta'ala gives him the tawfiq to worship him. وَآخِرُ دَعْوَانَا أَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ
نماز کی تیاری کریں گے نماز اوپر پڑھیں گے اوپر پڑھیں گے